crikey. Here we go again. Okay. Are you wondering what I'm up to? <sighs> well, I've decided to save gas and I thought I'd just light a fire under me drum. So we're going to light a fire and then we're going to make ourselves a frame cleaner upper machine. Well, it's not really going to be a machine, it's just going to be a drum. But anyway. <sighs> if you're wondering why the quality of the video improved, we actually finally got organised and we were filming ourselves on a really fill me up machine. So that's pretty cool, isn't it? Hang on, it's not a cool to fill me up machine. It's actually a proper camera. Right? No, the other thing was a camera. What would this be? This would be a movie camera. So hopefully for all you lovely people out there that have been watching and seen the spot, we're hoping that we've got the spot sorted. And thank you for you Patreon supporters that have helped us out. And to John's lovely wife, who actually chipped in a fair bit towards it all as well. So that was really cool. But if you're enjoying the show, don't forget to help us out because we've got all this sort of crap we need to keep it going. Anyway, by the way, I'm going to light a fire. Of course, now the next decision is to where to light our fire. The other day we were having a fire, the wife and me, we were trying to clean up the front yard and she decided that it was all too jolly hard to cart all the bushes and trees and crap that was in, in, in the way, so she lit a fire under the gum tree. That was kind of groovy. It was all going very nicely until it got a little bit hot and the gum tree caught on fire. That was a bit exciting. And so the bush bee man became the bush fire service and had to kind of hose and hose the tree down, which was way up in the sky. But thankfully, we ran out of, ran out of dry leaves to burn. So I think it went out by itself, but I looked impressive as the bush bee man fire service. Anyway, note to self, Boy Scouts, don't light fires under a tree. It's not very sensible. <laughs> we'll just find a bit of wood. This is one way to use up a bit of this wood that I can't be bothered cutting up. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can light a fire. <laughs> I'll just go and see if I can find some more paper. Or maybe a drum of petrol. Ta-da! Anyway, we'll just screw up a bit of paper here. I had a heap of paper in the back of my ute, but it rained the other day, so it's all jolly soggy. So now I've had to rescue some reserve paper. Looks like it's been used as mouse nest. What was that show that had a song that went like that, wasn't it? Was that, was that that crazy puppet, big puppet dude? Nah, I don't know. Yeah, it comes from somewhere in my childhood. In the, in the lost, in the lost memory zone, that is. Back there somewhere. Anyway, doesn't matter. You wouldn't actually be able to help me because I don't think you were even born. Can, is, there a, is there an app, the thing we did? You could sing into the phone and it could tell us what that was. <laughs> anyway, let's not worry about it. Let's light this fire and get on with a real job. Boy Scouts 101. When I was a Boy Scout, well, actually I didn't even get the Boy Scouts. I didn't even get past Cubs. And we had a fire lighting night and a Cub teacher, he was there, all the Cubs, we'd done the whole, North, South, East and West, stupid game, whatever that was called. Part side, hopefully your fuzz doesn't catch on light here, lad. But anyway, we were playing the game in the hall and then it got later in the evening and we had to go out and light the fire. Anyway, we were all right around and we had the yeah, bloody little bits of wood and all the rest of the nonsense and I lit my fire up and had it all burning and everybody else was still getting organised. But I got told off because apparently I didn't do it as the book said. But I said I had a fire, did it really matter? And apparently it does, so you know. Even if you can light a fire at Cubs, you don't necessarily pass. So, there's something to remember. Uh, that's it. That was a bit of a worry even when I was a kid, I guess. Uh, funny how you don't really remember everything, but you just remember bits and pieces of your childhood, isn't it? I guess most of it is just blank out because it's all just shit. <laughs> it's just like, I just skip over the glorious parts. No, skip over the really crappy parts and just remember some of the good bits and some of the really bad bits. And the rest of it's just a blur, really, isn't it? Just, oh, well, hopefully, just, hopefully not everybody. Anyway, there's a Boy Scout fire. <sighs> Would have got bloody in all sorts of trouble for that. <laughs> what I keep, hey? Golly gosh, lad. That's one way to clean up the yard, I guess, have a fire. At least this was a practical fire. Well, hopefully it's a practical fire. We're gonna find out in a minute. 
might be a completely stupid idea. My mate Les says it's a good idea <laughs> Burn, to make a fire under a drum to melt the, get the water hot, and clean the frames. This is what we're trying to achieve. While we let this get started, and hopefully we don't burn the environment completely, we're going to go and get ourselves a drum and cut its head off. And just hopefully we don't blow ourselves to kingdom come because it's an old fuel drum. I'm just hoping it's not going to be a radiator thing, otherwise my daughter won't talk to me. She said I'm not allowed to do anything stupid for three months. And I think we're only about a month in, so I'm not sure what happens if you break bloody curfews or whatever. I'm not sure how that works. Anyway, I'm sorry in advance, Tiff. Oh, well, this is the idea. I thought we could cut up this nice old thick drum. That ought to be nice. Well, actually, it might not be real flash at all. It's got a bloody hole in the bottom. Oh, damn it! Well, that's not blooming much good, is it? Still smells a bit like petrol. Oh, shit! Oh, well, we'll try one of these other ones. We'll have to use one of these drums. So, it's got a hole in the bottom. Bloody hell! Anyway, it should be good for the experiment. Oh, shit. Oh. Let's put this one upside down and see what happens. I didn't really want to wreck these drums, but anyway. Oh, I suppose we don't have to actually cut it off anyway, do we? We'll just use it as a whole thing and just don't... Because I was going to cut it off here and then it wouldn't be so insanely deep might be a bad idea because it might be more easier to operate with. Ah, <sighs> far out, Brussels sprout. <laughs> we'll just rinse it out and see if it holds water before we do anything. How's that for a plan? <laughs> At least we have to put it on the stand, I reckon. Ah, I've just turned it into an old man hose, hang on. <laughs> ah, shit. We were in shopping this morning, and the wife said, Aren't they your good pants? I went, well, they're not good pants anymore. But they might have been, I don't know. Anyway, that's the amount of trouble we can get in. We'll just go and get ourselves some bricks. I reckon these ones will work. We'll just stick it on. Then I'll be up out, have the heat underneath it. You reckon? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, we can always change it if it doesn't work, can't we? Oh. I'm sure the cheer squad's gonna on our team regardless. Come on, Bush B man, you can do it. Oh, golly. Oh. I guess if you were in the Wild West, you could have this as a bath, couldn't you? That's what they used to do, wouldn't it? They have a bit of a tub over a fire and jump in and have a bit of a scrub up. Bloody hell, that'd be interesting fun, wouldn't it? God. Kind of glad I've got indoor plumbing, even if I am a bit wild. Anyway, let's have a look if it leaks. Oh. Oh. I think this one's fucked too. <laughs> oh, golly. That's not very good. Be like my brother when we had old metal rainwater tanks at the farm and it was leaking like that. And he went up to it to see what was going on and stuck his finger in the hole. And of course, it, <laughs> when he finally got his finger out of the hole without cutting it too bad, bloody water was running everywhere. It was only just a slow drip and then it was a flood. 
Ah, the old man was not impressed. But at least for one time or other, it wasn't me in the shit, so that was good. I at least knew better than to poke my finger in holes that weren't accepting me. Anyway, this drum's buggered, <laughs> so <coughs> we'll try and see if we can find something else. Yeah, we might be back to the saucepan yet. Oh, I suppose if the film crew was really committed, he could keep his finger on it so it didn't leak, couldn't he? That might not be good for the next episode. Oh, anyway, let's go and see if we can find a drum that doesn't leak. Anyway, we'll have a nice pile of coals by the time we get organised, won't we? Maybe. <laughs> or we'll have nothing. One or two. Typical, isn't it? Typical, typical. Right, left, right, right. Forward, ho! Just thinking on the way out here, you know back in science class when you had your paper cup on a Bunsen burner and you could boil the water and as the water boiled down the cup edge would burn. I wonder if we could do it in a plastic barrel. Do you reckon that would just sort of start bubbling before it melted? Nah. <laughs> but at least it wouldn't leak before we set fire to it. One might work. That's gonna really suck if we drive all the way back home and put some water in and it still leaks, isn't it? I think it's got a bit of I think it's still got a bit of oil in it, so it should be alright. Ah, oh my goodness me! <sighs> Tell you what, if my support crew was any good, they'd drive the vehicle around for me, wouldn't they? But he tells me he's not really here, I just gotta pretend that I'm doing it on my own. Just wondering what's in that shed. There might be one in there too. There's crap everywhere. Oh, anyway, that one will be working too. Hop. Hop. Hello, anybody home? No one in here, but no one in here. If there's no one in there, how come you're talking back? <laughs> I don't know, I think this one's a bit better than that one. I wonder which one we should have. Anyway, if it, I was just thinking if it fails, we could start a whole new Broadway show. I don't know what we'd call ourselves, but no, would that be, instead of kicking the bucket, it'd be called kicking the drum. Come kick a drum with me. Anyway, shit, come on, come on, we're supposed to be going out. Hurry up, stop mucking about. Oh, heck, okay, here we go. Let's just hopefully this drum will be a bit more effective. We'll whiz her over here and we'll just, I reckon we'll just slap its head off. Since we have to cut this one anyway, we'll just chop it through there and we'll slap her on the fire. We can go Duncan trays. No, Duncan frames. <laughs> Be like my grandfather. My dad was telling me this story about his, about his dad, which would have been my granddad, or my great granddad. Anyway, one of the greats. He used to have the bloody fireplace, obviously, he had the open fire in the house, but he was a little bit too slack to cut the wood up, so he used to have the great big logs carry him into the house, you know, about this long, and he'd throw the end of it in the fire, have the fire roaring, and then he had a crowbar and he'd just when the fire log burnt down a little bit, he just put it on the angle and shove it in the fire a bit further. I thought, I don't reckon his wife was home. If that was the case, I don't think she'd be real happy. Now just as a footnote, folks, <laughs> if that was a petrol drum, bad idea. Don't do that if it's a petrol drum. This is an old oil drum. 
Petrol drums are better because they're thicker, but if you haven't got them cleaned out and you go cutting them up with an angle grinder, you'll end up in hospital. Oof. So, bad idea. <laughs> And just by the way, no, I haven't actually actually done that to myself, but I've heard of people doing it, so not a good idea. I've done plenty of other stupid shit, but at least I haven't blown myself up with a petrol drum just yet. <laughs> a few folks were writing in there asking what stuff I was spraying on my trees. It's just a natural product called zinc sulfate, so nothing too exciting. So I don't know whether you'll remember that, but anyway, it wasn't anything deadly. It's really gonna suck if this still leaks after all this excitement. Uh, you'll have to come back next week and figure it out. I don't know. Bloody hell. <laughs> I was just thinking of that bloke on the radio asking us, you know, how do we plan our episodes? I was thinking it's pretty obvious just right now we don't plan them too much. Otherwise I would have had a drum that didn't leak. In my defence, I had actually gone out and flew and opened the lid of that drum and so I could smell whether it was full of fuel or not. Obviously it's not full of fuel and the bottom's rusted out, is it? I didn't think to turn the damn thing upside down. <laughs> so good. I think we'll put it back up on our bricks and do our little test. See whether it leaks or not. So we wait, we're gonna chip it out first. No, I'm not that blooming strong. <laughs> Ah, oh, man! <laughs> it looks a little bit more stable. It's a magic hose! Look at the rocket ship! Ah! <laughs> oh, I wonder if that's how they did the snake tricks. Need a, I need a little fight. <laughs> oh, that's looking more promising. We might have a waterproof drum eventually. Now we've got to see if we can have it on the fire and melt it. Okay, well I reckon we'll just wipe the edge off a bit. It must be different metal on the bottom because it's sort of rusty down there, but all nice on the sides. Die, 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 come on. Get on with it, bush bee man. <laughs> Looks like there's a change coming. Oh, the change of the wind. Oh, what was that song? The winds of change or something? Is that a song? Uh. Right. Did anybody measure that the frames were actually going to go in this pot? That would have been a good idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> go off. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. Now we're gonna make some smoke for sure. Whew. Well that I'm still alive. There was some excitement that oil and water don't mix. Which is quite right, because I was at the jolly, when I was chefing, there was this jolly um, story going around that the young apprentice, he was filling up the chip fryer. And the chip fryer was on. And the chef said, he said to the chef, what do I put in there? And he said, oh, just throw some water in there. So the lad went and got a bucket of water and tipped in the chip fryer that was friggin' obviously stinking hot just before service. And of course the water and the oil just went Broof! up through the extraction fan and oh my God, all over everybody and everything. And I'm not really sure whether the apprentice ended up in hospital or not, but it didn't sound promising. So, if you happen, happen to be in a kitchen and the chef says you put some water in the hot cooker, don't do it. I was just being a twat. And it wasn't me, by the way, I wouldn't do that. It's a little bit like the left-handed screwdriver, you know. Go and get the left-handed screwdriver. Or, what was the other good one? The mechanics would say to the young apprentice, go and get me a bucket full of sparks. And the poor lad had come back after, after the angle grinder with his bucket full of black stuff and he'd go, no, I want him actually sparking. You're probably not allowed to do that stuff in workplaces anymore, are you? Stir up the poor young'uns. You probably meant to be all responsible. Responsible and light-hearted. No, I don't know. It's gonna be a rough hot water service. <laughs> so this is how you make a Bush B-Man hot water service, or a tank full of boiling water. 
And if you're wondering what the hell we were trying to achieve here, you better come back next episode and see what we're actually going to do with it. Anyway, see you in a minute.